What if I told you there was something you could add to your reef tank shortly after the nitrogen cycle that basically is like a reef tank cheat code? Let's talk about it. So what I want you to think about is when you're putting together your saltwater aquarium and you're getting all the things that you need, you're building an ecosystem here. We're not just building a glass tank with some animals in it. We're trying to put things in the tank that are all going to work together for the betterment of the whole society. In any good ecosystem, you have to have members all the way down at the bottom, all the way up to the top of the food chain. And these guys that I'm talking about today are the smallest little consumers in that ecosystem. The copepods. The number of species of copepods in the world of marine and freshwater is astonishingly huge. There's tens of thousands of different species. But in marine aquaria, we generally deal with about four to six in most cases. And they are readily available from most of your local fish stores or other places online where you can order copepods and phytoplankton, which is very important by the way, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But the main idea is that these little consumers will inhabit your aquarium and you probably want to use more than one species, that's a good idea, and they get into the sand and the rocks and they get on the glass and in the tubes and the filtration and the media and everywhere and they eat the detritus and the filamentous algae that's on those surfaces, keeping them clean. It's one of the reasons why a very mature reef tank like the one you see behind me, you don't have to clean the glass nearly as often as you did when you started the tank. It's because the things in the tank are doing it for you. Now, not only are they really good at keeping things cleaned up and whatnot, but they are incredibly nutritious for the animals in your tank that consume them. And it's not always just fish like you might think. Sometimes the corals eat certain species of copepods as well. And there can be other crustaceans in the tank like amphipods, for example, and they predate on the copepods too. And all of these things will eventually strike a balance in your tank with the reproduction of the new organisms versus what's being consumed and what's dying off and all of this and you just have a nice, good copepod population in your tank. These little guys are often overlooked when people talk about what kind of cleanup crew do you need to add to your tank. The most common answers are snails and shrimps and hermit crabs. You really don't hear people say copepods all that much, which is sort of baffling to me, but I think it's because we're only just now starting to really study the reality of how good these animals are in our aquarium. In this video by Ryan over at BRS, they ran an experiment with 12 different tanks that they intentionally put all of the bad things that we don't want in those tanks. Should we risk aggressive diatoms now that we know? When avoiding many of the diatoms is just as simple as adding a pod population? I think the answer is pretty obvious. And then they introduced an obscene amount of copepods to each tank. And well, you should probably just go check that video out and see what the results were. It's an incredible video and I highly recommend you watch it. Now, having said that, once you add the copepods into your tank, you're, you're probably going to have to supplement feed them a little bit. And their main food source is phytoplankton. So you can get that as well and you can dose that into the tank. And it's not a bad thing to just put phytoplankton into your reef tank anyway. I'm going to make a video on that soon. So make sure you're subscribed. That way you catch that one when it comes out. And the basic idea of how you add them to your tank is through a short acclimation process. You want to float the bottle of copepods in the water in the tank so that they become temperature acclimated. You want to add them at night with the pumps off and preferably in a refugium section of the tank where they don't go right into the main display and get eaten before they can start to reproduce. Now, the best time of the tank's life to add these guys is shortly after the nitrogen cycle, right before the ugly phase kicks off so that they can help you with that. And if you need to know what those are, there's two videos right here that are already set for you. I'll see you over there.